Right, today in geometry, we are looking at section 11.6, area of regular polygons. The diagram below shows a regular polygon inscribed in a circle. The center of the polygon and the radius of the polygon are the center and radius of its circumscribed circle. The distance from the center to any, I should say, any midpoint of a side. So we're going to add here any midpoint of a side. So the distance from the center to any midpoint of a side of the polygon is called the apothem of the polygon. The apothem is the height of an isosceles triangle that has two radii as legs. So we, are, we have that picture. A central angle of a regular polygon is an angle formed by two radii drawn to consecutive vertices of the polygon. To find the measure of each central angle, we're going to divide 360 degrees by the number of sides. And remember that we do 360 degrees because that's how many degrees there are all the way around the circle. And remember that the central angle will be the same as the um, um, intercepted arc. Right, so this picture already has some things labeled, but we're going to go ahead and write them out here as well. So the center of our circle and of this polygon is point A. Radius, we have two drawn, radius AB and radius AD. We could draw more, but those are the two that are drawn. The apothem is segment AC. The central angle is angle BAD. I wanted to find the measure of angle BAD. That would be 360 divided by, we have one, two, three, four, five, six by six sides. So that would be 60 degrees. And we have isosceles triangle BAD. And then again, since this angle here is 60 degrees, this whole arc would be 60 degrees if we needed that. All right, so let's look at some problems. It says ABCD is a regular pentagon inscribed in circle F. Find each angle measure. So first, I'm just going to label A, B, C, D, and E. So first one's the measure of angle A, F, B. Well, it's not drawn, so we can draw that in. We see that measure of angle A, F, B, this is a central angle. So to find that, we do 360 divided by the number of sides. It's a pentagon, so it's five sides. So 360 divided by five is 72 degrees. Now it wants the measure of angle AFG. Notice we do not have a G in here. So we're going to draw our apothem FG perpendicular to side AB. So and I'm going to label that G. It's important to know that your apothem is always perpendicular to a side of the isosceles triangle, which we know that because we said that the apothem is the height of the isosceles triangle, and remember that we've been saying all along that the height is always perpendicular to the base. All right, so now the measure of angle AFG, so it's this little angle here, the whole angle started out at 72. It's an isosceles triangle, so remember that the height of an isosceles triangle Cuts the base in half, which cuts that single angle in half. So all we have to do is take 72 and cut it in half. That's going to give us 36 degrees. Now they want the measure of angle GAF, this angle up here. Okay. If I take and draw that triangle out, this is my right angle at G, F, and A. We just found this angle here to be 36 degrees. Now we're looking for this angle up here. We know all three have to equal 180. Since this one is 90, these two together have to equal 90. So all we have to do is 90 minus 36, and we find that that angle is 54 degrees. All right, if we flip the paper over. It tells me WXYZ is a square inscribed inside circle P. So circle P tells me that P is the center. I'm going to go ahead and label my vertices W, X, Y, and Z. So it says identify the center. Well, that's P because they told me circle P. Identify a radius. Well, we have four drawn. So I could say radius PX, radius PY, radius PZ, 
and radius PW. It wants me to identify an apothem. I don't have one drawn, but I can go ahead and draw one. So if I draw an apothem, and again, it has to be perpendicular to a side, and I'm just going to label that Q. So now my apothem would be segment PQ, a central angle. Again, we have four, so one of them would be angle W, PX. One would be angle XPY. Another one would be angle YPZ. And the last one, angle ZPW. So now they want us to find the measure of angle XPY. XPY, they want me to find the measure of one of the central angles. Again, to do that, that's 360 divided by how many sides I have. It's a square, so there are four sides. So the measure of each central angle is 90 degrees. Now they want the measure of angle XPQ. So XPQ, that's this angle. Again, that's my central angle cut in half. So 90 cut in half is 45 degrees. Measure of angle PXQ. So now they want this angle. Again, if I draw this triangle out, this one is 90. We just found this to be 45. So subtract 90 minus 45 we find that this angle is also 45. Or we remember that that's one of our special triangles, 45, 45, 90. And so now it tells us that you can find the area of a regular integon by dividing it into congruent triangles. The area is going to equal one triangle times the number of triangles. So we want to find the area of the following. Remember we say we don't ever, ever round until the very end. So here we're going to keep four decimal places until the end four decimals until the end and at the end we can round okay but if we keep four decimal places then we will be good to the end at the end we can go one decimal all right so i have a radius drawn i draw my other radius here oh, let's do that a little bit better i draw my other radius also four. So now I have this isosceles triangle. I'm going to drop my apothem down. It's going to be perpendicular. First thing I need to do is find that central angle. So my central angle is, remember, 360 divided by the total sides. We have one, two, three, four, five. So it's a pentagon. So that is going to be 72 degrees. I'm going to draw this triangle out. This is four. This is my apothem. This is half of my base. Because remember, this is my whole base. My apothem cut it in half. The whole angle up here was 72. So if I cut 72 in half, that gets me the top angle, 36 degrees. So this angle right here is 36 degrees. I can find this bottom angle, but I don't need it right now. I need okay, the area of this triangle. So remember that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So I need to find this whole base. So if I find this one and I double it, then I have the whole base. I need to find the height of my triangle, which is the apothem. I'm going to use Sokotoa. So if I stand up here at 36 and I find my apothem first, that's adjacent over hypotenuse of cosine. So I would say the cosine of 36 is equal to A over 4. So cross multiply, my apothem is equal to 4 times the cosine of 36. So my apothem is approximately, let's see, three, we're going to just do four decimal places, 3.2361. Now I want to find this side. I can now either do Pythagorean theorem with this is my A, this is my C, or I can do um, Sokotoa again. I'm just going to do Sokotoa again. If I'm standing up here at 36, now I want the opposite my hypotenuse. So now I'm looking at the sine of 36 equals b over 4. So b is equal to 4 times the sine of 36. So then b is approximately 2.3511. But remember, this is half of my base. So now I need to multiply that by 2. So 2.3511 times 2 gets me 4.7022. 
Now the area of one triangle is one half the base, which we just said was 4.7022, times the height, which was our apothem, our apothem 3.2361. So all of that is approximately 7.6084 square units. So that is the area of one of these isosceles triangles. But remember, we had one, two, three, four, five of them in here since it was a pentagon. So now I need the area of five of those triangles. So I'm simply going to multiply the area of that one we just found times five to get the total area. And this is where I get 38.042. So I can round that to approximately 38.04 square units. So the area of this entire pentagon, and it's a regular pentagon, so remember that regular means all of the sides are the same and all of the interior angles are the same. So the area of that is approximately 38.04 square units, which means that those five isosceles triangles added together, the area is 38.04 square units. So now we're going to look at a theorem it tells us another way that we can find the area of a regular polygon. So if we don't want to find the area of each triangle and then multiply it by how many triangles we have, this tells me that the area of a regular integon with side length s is one half the product of the apothem a and the perimeter p. So if I take my apothem, and again that's going to be perpendicular, and I multiply it by the, uh, the perimeter, and remember, the perimeter is all the sides added up. So the area is equal to one half apothem times perimeter. My perimeter is equal to the number of sides that I have times the length. So that's where this comes in. A equals one half apothem times perimeter, or A equals one half A in S, where N is the number of sides and S is how many, the length of that side. So let's look at an example, find an area using this formula, <coughs> excuse me, instead of finding the area of each triangle. So it says you are decorating the top of a table by covering it with small ceramic tiles. The tabletop is a regular octagon with 15 inch sides. So I know all of these sides are 15. A radius of about 19.6. I can draw my radius wherever I want. So if I draw this, 19.6. What is the area you are covering? So I can find the perimeter easily, right? Octagon, eight sides. Each side is 15 inches. So eight times 15, the perimeter is 120 inches. Now I just need my apothem. So drop it down and have that triangle. We we'll draw that big triangle out for you. So this is 15. This was, this side is half of 15. Or, sorry, that was not 15 over there. Sorry. That was my radius, which was 19.6. This down here was half of 15, so that's 7.5. I need my apothem. Again, I can do Pythagorean theorem or my central angle would have been 360 divided by 8, which was 45. If I cut that in half, I get that this top angle here is 22.5. So I could do cosine of 22.5 equals A over 19.6, or I can do A squared plus 7.5 squared equals 19.6. I can do Pythagorean theorem. Either way, I'm going to get the same answer for A. I'm just going to do the um, Sokotoa, so I'm going to multiply both sides. 19.6 times the cosine of 22.5 equals A. And I get my apothem as approximately 18.1080. Again, I'm keeping four decimal places. So now I can say the area is equal to one half my apothem, 18.1080, times my perimeter, which was 120. And here I can round now. So the area is approximately 1,086.5 square inches. 
So now I've shown you two different ways to find the area of a regular polygon. You can find the area of an isosceles triangle in that polygon and then multiply that by how many isosceles triangles make up the polygon. Or you can find the perimeter of the polygon, the apothem of the polygon, multiply those together and cut in half. All right, so let's look at some more. So the next example, <clears throat> you are tiling a floor with ceramic regular hexagons with side length eight inches. So here are all of my sides are eight inches. So right off the bat, I know I can find my perimeter, right? So my perimeter is eight times, it's a hexagon, so there's six sides. So my perimeter is 48 inches. What is the area that one tile will cover? I need my apothem. So I drop that straight down. I don't know my radius here, okay? So now if I pull this triangle out that I just did, this is A, this made it four because the whole thing was eight. On this one, I don't know what the radius is. They didn't tell me. So I have to do Sokotoa. So find that central angle first. So 360 divided by six is 60. So this whole angle started out being 60. I cut it in half when I put my apothem, so that's 30. So now I see this is a 30-60-90 triangle. I could do Sokotoa, or I could remember my shortcut rules. So I'm looking for my apothem, which is my long leg opposite my 60. Remember, my long leg is my short leg times the square root of 3. So now I know my apothem is 4 square roots of 3. See how much time that saved us knowing those shortcuts? So now I can say that the area is one half my apothem, four square roots of three, times my perimeter, 48. So when I multiply all of that together, I get that my area is approximately 166.3 square inches. Right, we're going to look at one more example. A regular nonagon, so that's nine sides, is inscribed in a circle with a radius of four units. Mm -hmm. I test that sometimes. So, so, radius of four units. So here's my center. All of my radiuses are four. Find the perimeter and the area of the nonagon. So I need to find the base of this triangle. Right? So the very first thing I want to do is find my central angle here. So 360 divided by nonagon nine sides is 40 degrees. I'm just going to drop that apothem and draw this big triangle out. So this is four. This is half of my base. This top angle now is 40 cut in half, 20 degrees. I need to find my apothem. So again, if I stand up here, I have to do Sokotoa now. I can't do Thiagon Theorem because I don't know two of the sides. So the cosine of 20 equals my apothem over four. So my apothem is 4 times the cosine of 20. So my apothem turns out to be approximately 3.7588. Now I need to find this side. Again, now I could do Pythagorean Theorem or Sokotoa. I prefer Sokotoa. So now I'm just going to say the sine of 20 equals B over 4. So 4 times the sine of 20 equals B. So my B is approximately 1.3681. But remember that this is just half of my base. So now I need to multiply that by 2. And I get that's approximately 2.7362. So now I need to find my perimeter. My perimeter is going to equal, I have 9 sides. So 9 times each side was the 2B, 2.7362 approximately. So my perimeter is approximately 24.6258 units. So now my area <clears throat> equals one half my apothem, 3.7588 times my perimeter, 24.6258. Multiply all of that together and I get my area is approximately 46.3 square units. Right, so that is day one of 11.6. We will look at day two of this tomorrow, just doing more of the same stuff.